This is WJCL 22 News. And we're here to honor and glorify only one person, and that is the man in the glory, Jesus Christ. I've been asked so many times lately, do I fear death? No, I look forward to death with great anticipation. I'm looking forward to seeing God face to face. And Billy Graham now face to face with his creator. He was one of the world's most famous Christian evangelists. Thank you for joining us tonight for WJCL 22 News at 5. I'm Cassidy Lance. And I'm Shannon Royster. Reverend Billy Graham died this morning at his home. He was 99 years old. Tonight, we take a look back at his life and legacy. About my own calling. For William Franklin God Graham Jr., the message was always clear. Choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master and Savior. He began delivering that message in 1938. Over the next six decades, he preached the gospel to more than 100 million people in 85 countries on every continent, to everyone from the poor to the powerful. Billy Graham met with every U.S. president since Harry Truman. Some called him the president's preacher. Ronald Reagan presented him with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And three former presidents, Carter, Clinton, and Bush, helped dedicate the Billy Graham Library in Charlotte, where the size of the crowd compelled Graham to muse about his own passing. I feel like I've been attending my own funeral. <laughs> Born the son of North Carolina dairy farmers, it was not always apparent to the young man that he was being called to the ministry. I didn't like to go to church. I didn't like to read the Bible. I didn't like to pray. I didn't like any of those things. But that changed when at the age of 16, he attended a revival. He can forgive your sins. He can make you a new person. His wife of more than 50 years, Ruth McHugh Bell, was a partner in his efforts, making this log cabin home for the traveling evangelist, a home where they would raise five children, all of whom followed their father into ministry. After six decades of public preaching, Graham held what he called his final crusade in Queens, New York, the same place they had begun in 1957. And though the messenger had clearly changed with the years, his message had not. The greatest need in the world today is a transformation of human nature to make us love instead of hate. As for his own eternal destiny, Graham made no assumptions. I'm just an ordinary sinner that's been saved by the grace of God. I know that if I die today, I'll be in heaven tomorrow. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Well, WJCL has team coverage for you tonight. Our Dave Williams is in Savannah. He spoke to a local couple who drove nearly 14 hours to hear Reverend Graham speak. And our Tori Simkovic has reaction from South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. And her Sally Kidd has reaction from Capitol Hill. But we begin tonight with our Sharon Johnson, who spoke with a Savannah man who not only knew Graham, but ran one of his telephone ministries as well. There are thousands of you that God has been speaking to during the past four months. This is the Billy Graham that Dr. Arch Colberth remembers. Colberth was a Bible teacher and ran a Christian radio program in the 80s. He was invited to work with Graham's association and to be a part of one of his crusades in Tallahassee, Florida. People, all, all those people there, just, just, they're just so nice and you just feel the presence of, of goodness around you, you know, when you, when you, and of the Lord when you're around him. Colbert has here, met Graham several times, day. although he says he never got to be quite personal with him. Graham still left a mark. He's, his character is, is incredible, and uh, he was never involved in any kind of uh, scandal at all, you know, because he's a man of integrity. Colbert says that Graham's ways taught him how to preach with simplicity. And a local pastor says he attended a Graham crusade in the 70s as well. He wanted to know what happened after Graham called for people to accept God and the camera stopped rolling. That day he got his answer. But all over the place as I walked around people were crying and weeping. There were many people who were crying and weeping and asking the Lord to forgive them of their sin. Colbert says that Graham will be missed but he smiles for one reason. Now he said when he died he would be more alive then than he than he is now. So he's more alive now than he was last night, you know, because he's in heaven with uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Savannah, I'm Sharon Johnson, WJCL 22 News. 
And Colbreth also started a TV telephone ministry here in Savannah, a branch of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Well, Reverend Graham left quite an impression on another Savannah couple, so much of one they didn't think twice about making a long drive to see one of his final crusades. WJCL's Dave Williams has that story. I can't explain it. There was just something about him. I, you know, I just, I can't explain how I felt when I heard him preach. I just, I just knew I felt better when he preached. Reverend Billy Graham made quite the impression on Maggie Russo. In fact, as Reverend Graham's health began to worsen and he was winding down his crusades, she didn't want to miss out. So she and her husband Bill drove some 14 hours to New York City in June of 2005 to hear Reverend Graham's sermon. We were on a short time schedule, so we left in the morning and drove up to Secaucus, stayed in Secaucus and took the bus into the city. In the city, we took the subway up to Flushing Meadows and heard him. As soon as he was done, we, we turned around, took the subway back to the city, got on the bus, and went back to Secaucus and drove home. There were tens of thousands of oh, people there. I don't know unbelievable. exactly, but it was, uh, it was yeah. really inspiring. But the Russos weren't the only ones inspired by Reverend Graham. Millions worldwide were also touched by his message. I just think it was just... Just something about the way he spoke. I, I can't explain it. Uh, well, it, it was, uh, I, I think it was just a message that God loves you. God loves you. No matter what. And then, uh, you know, a very, very simple corollary of that is uh, love one another. In Savannah, Dave Williams, WJCL 22 News. Well, known as America's pastor, Billy Graham was also a pastor to U.S. presidents over his 60-year career. Sally Kidd joins us now live from the White House. And Sally, how is President Trump reacting to Graham's death? Hi, Shannon. Well, President Trump is... Uh, ish, he issued a statement calling Reverend Billy Graham a towering figure and American hero whose life earned him the title of God's ambassador. There is only one way that men can get to heaven. The Reverend Billy Graham, spiritual counselor and confidant to presidents, from Truman to Nixon, Reagan to Obama. He was a very comforting figure individually to presidents, particularly in times of stress. Presidential historians say Graham was particularly close to Nixon, LBJ and Eisenhower. We've never had a spiritual awakening on the scale uh, that we have had under the Eisenhower administration, and I came by to thank him for that. He was there for many of the biggest moments in modern political history. The Kennedy assassination, Watergate, the Vietnam and Gulf Wars, comforting the nation after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Compassion in the midst of suffering. Former President Obama calling Graham a humble servant who with wisdom and grace gave hope and guidance to generations of Americans. Christ belongs to all people. Former President George W. Bush calls Graham a consequential leader. Former President Jimmy Carter remembers him as broad-minded, forgiving, and humble. And former President Bill Clinton says Graham is leaving our world a better place and claiming his place in glory. And in 1983, President Reagan awarded Graham the nation's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Live at the White House, Sally Kidd, WJCL 22 News. Sally, thank you. Now, when the Billy Graham Museum and Library was dedicated back in 2007 in Charlotte, North Carolina, George H.W. Bush, Jimmy Carter, and Bill Clinton attended. Well, we are heading out live to Beaufort County now, where South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster spoke on Reverend Graham's passing. Tori Simkovic has more from there. Tori. Shannon, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster said Billy Graham touched the lives of millions of Americans. McMaster, a devout Christian, mourned the evangelist pastor today, calling him a truly inspirational figure. He said even though many religious leaders throughout history have been polarizing, Graham was beloved. He said he doesn't feel like modern televangelists will be able to compare or fill Graham's shoes. I know a lot of people who would uh, stumble through the, the television looking for a good channel and come across Billy Graham teaching, they'd stop right there because you, you really can't take yourself away from him when you, you hear him talking. 
Governor McMaster made his remarks during a visit to Hilton Head Island. He was here for the governor's conference on tourism and travel. The governor called the death of Billy Graham a great loss for this country and said he doesn't think he'll ever be replaced. Reporting live in the Low Country tonight, Tori Simkovic, WJCL 22 News. Tori, thank you. Georgia's Governor Nathan Deal tweeted his condolences, saying Sandra and I are saddened by the passing of Reverend Billy Graham. His leadership and service had a profound impact on many lives, and his faith helped many people strengthen their personal relationships with God. We'll stay with WJCL for our special hour-long edition of WJCL 22 News at 7, remembering Billy Graham. Well, Billy Graham Crusades grew a reputation for big crowds. Still ahead at 5, we'll show you one that defied all expectations. From up in the balconies and all around, you come. We're going to wait on you. When I was saved in 1961, uh, it was so crowded that I was in the very top of the bleachers. Every head bowed in prayer. Just get up out of your seat right now and come. Men, women, young people, quickly, right now. God touched my heart. I came forward and, uh, and received Christ. And we want to get back to our top story tonight. We're going to take you on a trip to a small town of Montreat, where Reverend Billy Graham lived out his final chapter of life. Well, Hearst Madeline Hackett joins us not far from Graham's house with the impact he left on his community. Madeline. Well, ladies, a 2010 population survey shows that at that time, just 723 people lived in this tiny Montreat community. Of course, Reverend Billy Graham being one of those. And longtime residents here tell me they have long considered Reverend Graham one of their own. Montreat, as I'm told by locals, actually stands for Mountain Retreat, and it's where Graham's wife, Ruth's missionary parents lived. Billy and Ruth lived here for more than six decades in a cabin nestled in the mountains of the Swannanoa Valley, where they raised their five children. Town Hardware and General Store is located in Black Mountain, the city located less than a mile from Montreat. It's where we're told Graham had his own account and family members would regularly purchase household necessities. Manager of the store, Dennis Jackson, says that the town took it upon themselves to look out for Graham and respect his privacy. And people often ask for him or ask about him or where he lives and how can we go see his house and all that sort of thing. I think they just tried to protect, you know, one of their own, you know, just um, tried to uh, shield him from any undue attention, I suppose you'd say. Jackson went on to tell me he remembers when former President Barack Obama came through these streets to visit Graham and it shut the town down. Other than that, in his later years, many would not have even expected that such a legend lived here. And while uh, while Billy Graham circled the globe preaching, Ruth stayed home not far from here and raised their five children, those five children following in the steps of their parents and spreading the word of God. Madeline Hackett in Montreat, WJCL 22 News. Madeline, thank you. And in 1973, a crusade in Seoul, South Korea, reportedly drew an average of 526,000 people in each of its first four nights. But on night five, according to reports, that service drew a crowd of 1.1 million people. A picture showing a virtual sea of humanity. It became the most successful Billy Graham crusade. It's unbelievable. Well, at 5.30, we will continue to remember the life and legacy of the Reverend Billy Graham. We'll take you to Charlotte, where dozens pour in after hearing of his passing, how they're remembering him. By coming and standing quietly here and saying to God, I give myself to thee. I'm going to ask you to come. Men, women, young people, if you come from the top balcony, it'll take a moment, but just come on. I can't imagine the hordes of people in heaven that said, I'm here because of you, Billy. He uses the word tomorrow. He uses the word today. He uses the word now. 